The job of a soldier is to kill. Some fight for honor, some fight for higher purposes, some fight for money, and some fight for fame. And yet there are those who do not fight for ideals or for an agenda or for profit. There are some who kill purely because they seek blood, and as soldiers they have to write to reap it. There are warriors like this, warriors with such a dim view of life and its value that, to them, death is almost a mercy. Killing satisfies an internal thirst for death, while also relieving the victim of the burden of living. They are saviors in their own twisted and psychopathic way. And for honor, these warriors who kill in this way are the Hitokiri, samurai executioners who see themselves as Shinigami, or death gods. But who are the Hitokiri in history? Are there really samurai like them in the history books? Let's find out. Welcome back to Heroes in History, where we take a look at all the warriors in For Honor and discuss who they're based on in history and whether or not they do their counterparts justice. After much request, today we're talking about Hitokiri. The word Hitokiri is a combination of two parts. Hito, which can mean man, and Kiri, which can mean slayer or cutter. So the word literally means manslayer or man cutter. This word defines the Hitokiri quite well, but why this word specifically? Samurai often had to kill historically, so what makes the Hitakiri so unique that they need this title? Well, in For Honor's lore, the Hitakiri are wandering executioners and dispensers of justice. Their job is to go from village to village and put to death those who are condemned to die. They do this through the use of their massive Masakari axes that they carry around. However, over time, the Hitakiri have grown numb to their humanity. They view life as trivial, base, sinful. It's all a lie. Life is pain and a burden, and thus they have been given a higher calling to be more than mere executioners. They are the saviors of humanity. They will relieve mankind of their painful existence and slaughter as Shinigami or death gods. This lack of empathy and complete bloodlust makes the Hitakiri nothing short of nightmarish in battle. But were there really warriors like that in history? Well, in a word, no. There weren't designated samurai executioners with big axes that wandered around killing condemned criminals. But there were Hitakiri. There were four, to be exact. But to discuss the real-life Hitakiri, we need to go back to the Tokugawa era at its decline. In the final years of the Bakufu, also called the Bakumatsu, Japan was facing a crisis. The country had experienced over two centuries of almost total closure to the outside world called Sokoku, only doing occasional minor trade with the Dutch at a specific port. However, when America arrived and forced the country to open its borders through sheer militaristic might, Japan had a few new problems to face. On the one hand, they couldn't deny the advantages of opening trade to the outside world, but on the other hand, doing so put their way of life at risk. The Emperor of Japan, who at that point was little more than a figurehead, was being given far more political power thanks to the West's desires to do dealings with him. This led to a divide in the people of Japan, between the pro-imperialist government and the pro-shogun government. As Japan, during this period, began to move further and further towards imperial power taking over, and the days of the shogun were coming to an end, it became clear that the inevitable conclusion of this movement would have the samurai stripped of their status, power, and privilege. This resulted in various skirmishes between Tokugawa forces, like the elite swordsman Shinsen Gumi, and the imperialist military, which was being backed by British and American military strength, training, and technology. All of this would come to a head during the Boshin War, which would mark the end of the Shogunate and an end to the Bakufu, and it would also start the beginning of the Meiji Era. But during these years of conflict, there were four swordsmen whose killing skills were so legendary and exceptional that they have gone down in history for their unique fighting skills and deadly reputations. These were the four Hitukiri, all asked to enact Tenchu, or Heaven's Punishment, upon those who would oppose the Emperor of Japan. One was Okada Izo, a bodyguard and deadly assassin who worked for the Tosa Kinoto, a pro-imperialist organization. Several assassinations have been credited to him, including Inoue Saichiro, Honma Sechiro, Ekoichi Daigaku, Mori Magoroku, Ogawara Juzo, Watanabe Kinzan, and Ueda Jonsuke, who were government officials and Yoriki, or police sergeants, that belonged to the Kyoto City Magistrate. He also assassinated Tada Tatawaki, son of Nagano Shuzen, who commanded an organization of shogun-supported thugs, and he assassinated Moriyama Kuze, whose body he left tied to a bridge as a message. It was this act which gave him the title of Hitakiri. He was arrested after the assassination of a shogun official and samurai in 1865. He and his fellow Kanoto warriors underwent torture and interrogation. After he confessed, he was beheaded. Second was Tanaka Shinbei. 
He was also nicknamed Captain of Assassins. He has been credited with killing more people than any other Hitakiri, and he was also credited with the assassination of Ii Naosuke, the head of the Edo Council of Elders and a vital politician in the Tokugawa government. It was this assassination that caused a domino effect of more and more assassinations and, and a total collapse in the shogunate leadership. Other assassinations credited to Tanaka are Shimada Sakon, Ukyo Omokuni, and Homa Sechiro all of whom were high-ranking politicians in the Tokugawa court. When his sword was discovered at the scene of the murder of Anagakoji Kentomo, he was arrested. As his final act, he asked if he could see the sword they, could, they had found to prove it was his. When they brought it to him, he took it out and committed seppuku immediately. The third and most controversial was Karino Toshiaki, he was more than a samurai, but also a general in the Imperial Army during the Boshin War. He was a master swordsman with many victories under his belt. While no assassinations were ever attributed to him, his cool intellect and brilliant tactical capabilities made him famous in his own right. However, during the Satsuma Rebellion, he abandoned the Imperial Army and joined forces with Saigo Takamori, the leader of the Samurai Rebellion. He would die in the Battle of Shiroyama along with Saigo. Now the fourth, and arguably the most famous for his presence in pop culture, is Kawakami Gensai. Famous for his unique sword fighting ability, it was said that his unique speed sword style was so good he could kill his targets in broad daylight. Gensai has many assassinations attributed to him, but only one has been proven and seen, and it is also his most famous. In broad daylight in 1864, Gensai struck down a famous scholar and politician of the shogunate at the time named Sakuma Shozan. This kill put him on the map, so to speak, and after that, his sword skills became the stuff of legends. It is said that he was present along with Tanaka Shinbei at the assassination of Ii Naosuke, and that he only ever cuts down his targets in one stroke. He was imprisoned and released at the end of the Meiji Restoration, meaning he was the only Hitakiri to survive into the Meiji era. He changed his name and tried to leave his old life as a Hitakiri behind and live a life as a swordsmanship instructor under the imperialist government. However, he was later arrested and executed for harboring members of a wanted militia that was pro-shogun. In fact, it was Kawakami Gensai who acted as the main inspiration for the Ronin Himura Kenshin in the hit manga and anime Roroni Kenshin. A former manslayer known as Hitakiri Batosai, Kenshin slayed countless people during the revolution. But much like Gensai, he too gave up the wave of the Hitakiri in favor of a more peaceful life. But the remnants of the old war kept dragging him back into combat. I highly recommend both the manga, anime, and live action movies. They are some of the best out there, and I really, really love the story. Do check it out. These four men became famous as the Hitakiri of the Bakumatsu, the four deadliest assassins of the samurai. They were so infamous that the elite shogun swordsman corps known as the Shinsengumi was created in part to counter them. But how are they different from the Hitakiri of For Honor? Where are the differences? Well, there are several. For one thing, the real Hitakiri were assassins in service of the imperial government. The Furano Hitakiri are psychopathic executioners. The real assassins all killed in the name of furthering the imperial movement. The Four Honor Hitakiri kill because they see human life as a burden. Their ideals are monstrously different. Even their weapons are different. The Masakari axe is not really a battlefield axe. Masakari are large woodcutting axes and could be repurposed as battlefield axes. In reality, the samurai who used axes would more than likely use ono, which is a general term for axe, and they wouldn't be dual-bladed like the way the Masakari are. The real-life Hitakiri never used such large weapons in the first place, usually only using their swords. The For Honor Hitakiri also seem to be wearing ceremonial garments and robes with masks to cover their expressionless faces. This could very well be a reference to the Yamabushi, who were monks who acted in spiritual uh, meditation. That could also be why the Hitakiri and For Honor seem to reference Shinigami and Yokai so often. The Hitakiri in history likely wore kimono and typical clothes of the samurai at that time period. And okay, time to address it. Everyone keeps asking me about the weird hair helmet that the Hitakiri in the game wears. They're called Shogonori Kabuto, or hair variant helmets. 
There's no real meaning to it outside of cosmetics and looking important or cool. These helmets tend to have horse hair attached to the top areas of the helmet, and it's not much different from one of Kensei helmet ornaments. So there you go. However, I think there are many ways we need to look at these warriors in a similar light. I think that the ideology of the heroes might be different, but at a fundamental level, the historical and the game counterparts are both professional killers who initially were in the service of their government or ruling body. The game Hitakiri, though, seems to kill for their own personal sense of ideological ends, or just because it satisfies them. When I think of both, I am reminded of the organization CP9 from the anime One Piece, a covert operations organization that the government deploys to infiltrate and kill those that the government wants to silently eliminate. Like the historical Hitakiri, they are professional warriors, highly trained, and the best at what they do. They answer only to the government's power and have a few equals at what they do, but they are professional assassins and killers. However, like the For Honor Hitakiri, they don't prescribe to a specific ideology about what should be done with the world, nor do they seek peace or preservation of a society. As Rob Lucci, the leader of CP9, said, Perhaps all we seek is blood, and with CP9, we have the privilege to kill. In the most haunting way, there can be no more effective warrior, a killer with no compulsion, ambition, or desire except to spill blood, to slaughter. Though the historical Hitakiri might not have been so sociopathic or cold-hearted, there is a reason they're called manslayers among a host of samurai. All samurai walk a path of honor, but for the Hitakiri, the path they walk is stained red with blood. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing, commenting, and liking, and I will see you in my next video. Take care. Our battle will be legendary. Noni. No, 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 no! Oh, okay! Hello again, dumbbell! Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Help me! Help me! Nick! Why are you the way that you are? Eventually. The enemy rallying.